Maasim, Acts 26. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, You are permitted to speak for yourself. Then Paul stretched forth his hand, rather the hand, and answered for himself. I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because I shall answer for myself this day before you, touching all the things whereof I am accused of the Yaudim, especially because I know you to be expert in all customs and questions which are among the Yaudim. Wherefore I beseech you to hear me patiently. My manner of life from my youth, which was at the first among my own nation at Yerushalayim, know all the Yaudim, which knew me from the beginning, if they would testify that after the most straightest sect of our observances, I lived a parashi. And now I stand and am judged for the hope of the promise made of Yahuwah unto our fathers, unto which promise our twelve tribes, instantly serving eth, Yahuwah, day and night, hope to come. For which hope's sake, King Agrippa, I am accused of the Yahudim. Why should it be thought a thing incredible with you, that Yahuwah should raise the dead? I truly thought with myself that I ought to do, to do many things contrary to the name of Yahusha the Netzari, which thing I also did in Yerushalayim, and many of the Kodashim did I shut up in prison, having received authority from the chief priests. And when they were put to death, I gave my voice against them, and I punished them oft in every synagogue, and compelled them to blaspheme. And, being exceedingly mad against them, I persecuted them, even unto strange cities. Whereupon, as I went to Damascus, with authority and commission from the chief priests, at midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven, above the brightness of the sun, shining round about me and them which journeyed with me. And when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the Ivrit tongue, Pa'al, Pa'al, why do you persecute me? It is hard for you to kick against the pricks. And I said, Who are you, Adonai? And he said, I am Yahusha whom you persecute, but rise and stand upon your feet. For I have appeared unto you for this purpose, to make you a minister and a witness, both of these things which you have seen, and of those things in the which I will appear unto you. Delivering you from the people and from their nations, unto whom now I send you, to open their eyes, and to turn them from darkness to light, and from the power of Satan unto Yahuwah, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by belief that is in me. Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision, but showed first unto them of Damascus and at Yerushalayim and throughout all the coasts of Yahud, and then to the other nations, that they should repent and turn to Yahuwah and do works meet for repentance. For these causes the Yahudim caught me in the temple and went about to kill me. Having therefore obtained help of Yahuwah, I continued unto this day witnessing both to small and great, saying none other things than those which the prophets and Moshe did say should come, that Hamashiach should suffer, and that he should be the first that should rise from the dead, and should show light unto the people and to the other nations. And as he thus spoke for himself, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul! You are beside yourself. Much learning makes you mad. But he said, I am not mad, most noble Festus, 
but speak forth the words of truth and soberness. For the king knows of these things, before whom I also I speak freely, for I am persuaded that none of these things are hidden from him, for this thing was not done in a corner. King Agrippa, do you believe the prophets? I know that you believe. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, You almost persuade me to be a Netzari. And Paul said, I pray that not only you, but also all that hear me this day, were both almost and altogether such as I am, except these bonds. And when he had thus spoken, the king rose up, and the governor, and Bernice, and they that sat with them. And when they were gone aside, they talked between themselves, saying, This man does nothing worthy of death or bonds. Then said Agrippa unto Festus, This man might have been set at liberty if he had not appealed unto Kekar, 